Hey, this is Steve with Dabble Lab, and this is another episode of Dabble with Experts. And today I'm joined by Nico Acosta, who is the Director of Product and Engineering for Twilio Autopilot. And um, I've had the good fortune to uh, work with Nico and, and Autopilot for a little bit. And so today we get a chance to, uh, to dabble a bit together, although he's going to be uh, driving and showing us. What are, what are you going to be showing us today, Nico? Cool. Hey, Steve. <laughs> uh, so we're going to be... Just uh, playing around with Autopilot, seeing uh, all the different features, all the things that you can do. There's a, there's a bunch of, of cool stuff here. So uh, we'll, we'll just be playing around, building different things, and uh, showing you all the, all the capabilities. Excellent. And, and I know there's a lot of new stuff in uh, recent weeks. So yeah, let's, um, let's jump in and see what, uh, see what there is. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen if that's okay. Yes, please do. Great. Cool. Got it. So a couple of, uh, a couple of things that, uh, that I think it's important to, to mention before and how, how we think about conversational interfaces and, and a little bit about Twilio and Autopilot. So I'm not sure if everyone has heard about Twilio before. We're a communications API platform that enables developers to build uh, communication solutions using cloud APIs kind of rather than old school telecom hardware. And Autopilot is our conversational AI platform for developers to build intelligent assistance that they can deploy across any channel. So you build once and you can deploy uh, on any channel, which is kind of cool. Um, a lot of the things that we see, obviously building intelligent assistance is a, uh, uh, it's an AI complete uh, problem. Probably one of the hardest uh, problems out there. And a lot of what we try to do with Autopilot is give you all the power of machine learning while still making it super, super easy to, to program. And so I'm going to walk through our insurance code. So this is, a, this is an assistant that I have uh, built here. The first, first thing you, you'll notice about Autopilot is that we organize stuff with tasks. And tasks really represent kind of what, what the user wants to accomplish. So uh, greeting is our initiation task. Uh, check claim status. File a claim. Talk to someone. Uh, get an insurance quote or uh, do the MPS survey. Okay. And then one of the things we think a lot about is, is the separation between programming and training. These are kind of very different modes that you're, that you're in. Um, so when, when you click on train, you'll see here all the, all the samples that are how this task is triggered. So this is where the natural language understanding comes in. These are all the ways that somebody can say, hey, I want to know what's going on with my claim. And if you say like exactly what I said is not there, so uh, we can add it. So we can say, hey, I want to know uh, what's going on with my claim. Um, or if you imagine like saying this in a very different way, it's like, uh, you know, where's my money? <laughs> um, right? Like you're at, at the end of the day, you want to get paid and, and you really want to capture all the different ways that somebody can, can say that. And this will this will train the machine learning model, right? So at at some point, even if somebody uh, phrases it in a way that's maybe not exactly the way that you put it in there, uh, that will be uh, mapped to the task as well. Exactly. Yes. You don't need to enter every single. It doesn't do a, a character by character match. This builds a a machine learning model, so it will train it so that it can recognize things it has not seen before got it and we go here to the natural language router which build a 
build a v2 of this model and then it'll it'll take that sample that i added and it'll bake it in but that's the you can think about the training as how we get to a task how is a task triggered right and but then there's a question of like when when we when we get to a task, uh, what then? So that's where programming comes in. So let me, I'm gonna create a new task. Um, so the first half of it is, is sort of recognizing what the user wants and then the second half is fulfilling what the user wants. The exactly. Programmer part. Uh, imagine I wanna cancel all my policy. So let's just follow the insurance. It is an auto policy cancel policy. Let's just go ahead and set a couple. Mm -hmm. uh, and here you can do a multi line. Um, please. Um, how do I cancel my policy? Just add these. So now we've got our brand new, our brand new task, and we're going to go ahead and program. And here is where robot tech like really, really um, powerful. Just get a little bit more uh, screen real estate here. And so you program the tasks with actions. With that, the, and you can see all the actions here. You have say to say something back to the user. So it's like uh, I can help you uh, cancel. Um, you can collect. And here in this right hand side, you'll see a bunch of different templates. So collect for a yes, no question. You'll see for multiple questions, uh, asking multiple questions and validating the answers. So let's, let's look at this at a, in a bigger screen. So here you see a, essentially a question answering workflow where you capture a bunch of, of data from the user and you give it like first first name and you see it will you build in field types for like first name date time number you have like 18 different uh, build types field types so if you copy this you can paste it in your um, in your task you can program this you can do this in the actions bin or you can do this with a URL so if you paste your server URL here, you can render the actions directly from your application. So the action bin is going to save it there locally, and then the URL will allow you to call whatever endpoint you uh, you, you want to return uh, a JSON format for the response back. Exactly. Exactly. But then what is, what is really neat, uh, say you do a, 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 say you do a collect, right? Say, do you really want to cancel? <laughs> um, and you have a URI UR here, right? On complete call this URL and one of the cool things is that on complete you fetch that URL and you can return more JSON so you can keep going on a multi turn flow and a multi turn conversation on a single task it is so we see we see really three types of tasks 
there are, there are tasks that are system of record questions. Like, what is the status of my claim? You know, assuming you know the customer, you go dip your database and come out with the status of the claim. Like, only you know that answer, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it, and it's an answer that's like, it's a system of record. Like, you need to have a database with the status of the claims. There's then like the knowledge questions type of answer where it's like, will you ensure, um, will you, will you ensure a Lamborghini? <laughs> yes or no. Right. Um, or these are, these are knowledge type of questions. And the third one are our data collection workflows where these are multi, multi-turn conversations that go back and forth between the bot and the user collecting different data, the different pieces of data. And that's something I think what about this is doing in a unique way where you don't need to con you don't need to create a task for every single turn of the conversation. Mm. Uh, you can do multiple turns of a conversation because from a business logic perspective, the like you're still trying to get an insurance quote. Mm -hmm. So let me show you, uh, for example, how how that works. And these can be combined also, right? So uh, if if I had a case where I wanted to use collect um, to collect information that was then going to be used for a query to query a system of record. Uh, and respond with the results of the query. I could do that all as part of one task. You absolutely could, yeah. So let me show you that in action. So here we have, let's go to insurance quote and program, and you'll see, you know, like we've put a URL here, right? And this URL points to a Twilio function that you can think about it as kind of like a lambda function it's a it's a real twilio runtime environment where uh, where we have all these uh, auto insurance functions so like serverless serverless code it's serverless code exactly this could run here it could run in your application server it could run on heroku right got it wherever so if you if you look what we do, one of the things we do is that we keep track of which state, which step we're in. So auto insurance has, is a multi-step task. So we just keep track and implement the task step by step. So great, I can help you with your auto insurance. I'll need to ask you a couple of questions. And then here we go. We remember the state, uh, the step, sorry, and we move it to one. Remember is really cool because remember helps you build context on the conversation. And you can, you can start to remember any, any variable that is relevant for that session. So, okay, so that was, uh, that was a question I was gonna ask. So the scope of that is the session? The scope of that is the session. Got it. So you're not worried that you're going to switch to another task and your, and your data is gonna get wiped out. Mm -hmm. Here we have a say, so here's kind of a, we're combining, we're combining actions, right? We have a remember, we have a say, and we have a collect, asking us for the make of the car, the model, the year, uh, an email. And then it sends it back to our, it sends it back to the same function, right? So when it's done with that flow, it sends it back here. This captures the step one. Like great, uh, hard coded stuff here, but uh, you can you can you can imagine these are, are variables, and then mark the step two, say the message, and when you look at the end, it's like we're done. We sent you the quote to the email. Is there anything else I can help you with? And you essentially tell autopilot that you're expecting an answer, saying a listen equals true. So that's. That, that is an example of an implementation of a multi-step multi, multi step task. So you don't need to create, you don't need to create like insurance step 
uh, step one or step two, you just create one task and it's like fairly dynamic how you implement it. Because like the world is, is very dynamic. You can imagine you asking different questions depending on the type of car, right? Or you ask a prompt for the state and then if it's California, you ask some questions. If it's Florida, you ask different questions. Who knows, right? Business logic is business logic. And that stuff, can that, that, that's all created um, runtime, right? So you don't need to rebuild the model for that either. Yeah, no, you don't need to rebuild the model. That is, that is completely uh, created at runtime. Yeah, so you could imagine this, um, the, the questions that are being asked being uh, truly personal and, and maybe generated from back-end data in some cases. Absolutely, absolutely. Very cool. And the default behaviors here, you essentially tell the assistant where to start. You tell the assistant which task you want to use as a fallback in case it doesn't understand. And you give it a, we'll point this to the same fallback on failure. If it fails more than three times to collect a, collect the question, it goes to the fallback. And the style sheet is, is really a, a unique concept that we have, which gives the tone and voice to, to your assistant. So here we, we set the voice and we set the error messages or like the default error messages. You can customize these per question if you want, uh, but we take care of all the, all the validation. So it's not something that you need to worry about. You can just customize the messages and that, that gives you kind of like the, the tone and voice and the, and the feel for the assistant. Yeah, so you can change all this out without having to rebuild the assistant, right? And so maybe even this exactly. potentially could be um, personalized based on the user uh, persona that's coming in. Maybe if you had like uh, an older user, a user from a certain region versus a younger user, you might change the, uh, the voice out. And is that using Amazon Poly Voices? Yeah, that's using Amazon Poly Voices. And we're constantly adding more voices and we want to add like a whole whole set of voices so you have pretty much access to whatever is out there um, so like the voices are like everybody wants a different voice wants their own voice yeah. so um here's it's, 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 a, it's a place where we believe in 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 selection uh, you just need to have access to a, to a ton of voices is there like the uh, the Twilio Nico voice yet? I don't I don't see that not, one. Not yet. Go <laughs> uh, on the roadmap, yet. right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's a that's a, a quick overview. Uh, let's see what else. And then there's the channels. Right, so yeah, here, this is my favorite part. <laughs> essentially, you can deploy this system to wherever you want. If you're not familiar with Twilio, this could, could be a little bit uh, strange that you just get a URL, but it all makes sense when, when you go to a phone number configuration, uh, say insurance, and then the way that you configure a phone number is with a URL. So you're essentially, when a call comes in, webhook, and we tell it webhook to autopilot. So we copy this URL in this phone number for voice, and then we do the same for messaging. So you can actually just give this phone number a call. Four two four. Two seven six six three three three. Welcome to the Conversational Insurance Company. I'm your virtual assistant. How can I help you today? I want to know the status of my claim. You have one active claim number 234237 for your 2007 Lamborghini Diablo. It has been accepted and is pending payment. Is there anything else I can help you with? So you can see how it's really easy to get it connected to, to voice. And now and we know they do cover Lamborghinis. They do cover Lamborghinis. <laughs> um, so um, here we can see how 
we saw how you can configure autopilot to work with phone number. But one of the cool things and something I haven't shown you, Steve, is how it works with chat and Flex. So take, we have not changed one line of code. You just saw it working over the phone. If you text the number, if you text the number, if you text this number, it'll work uh, the same way. Oh, so web chat. Imagine this is the website for the conversational insurance company and say, hey, hi there. Welcome to conversational insurance company. I'm your virtual assistant. How can I help you? And uh, I don't know what is the status of my claim. And then you get a... Um, you have one active claim, number 223, for your 2007 Lamborghini Diablo. Uh, it's painting payment, but I like, imagine like I really need that paid uh, really fast. So it's like, um, uh, can I talk to an agent? I notice here, I'm, I'm Maria, this is Autopilot. Okay, I'll connect you to an agent now, please hold on. And what we'll see here in Twilio Flex, this is our uh, contact center application platform. And I'm logged in as an agent as well. You'll see a task come in. So you have Maria, which I'm Maria on this tab. Uh, and I see an incoming chat request. And this goes through a whole routing layer that, let me see, I'm the only agent in this install. Uh, but if you have a set of agents it goes through a whole routing layer that does like skill-based routing uh, or any rule-based routing that you want until you get the task here and one thing that you'll see which is really cool is that the agent gets the transcript of what the user interacted with the bot yeah that's so, so awesome like, the user uh, you already get all the context here uh, you're you're seeing like okay you check the claim and then, and then you're gonna respond. Hi, Maria. Um, this is Nico. Um, here, to, how can I help you? And then you'll go back here to Maria's window, and you see kind of where autopilot left off. And then you have Agent Nico Costa. Maria, how can I help you? Uh, and say, can I get it? paid uh, sooner yeah. uh, right you guys sure. sure let me sort that out for you right yeah this and, is yeah this is very cool and you have here eventually the agent a uh, the interaction is done and here to, to the right band you can configure a whole CRM and do like a yeah. whole bunch of stuff. Uh, so like that smooth handoff is is really important because we, we believe that there are some tasks that are really well suited for self-service uh, that getting an insurance quote I mean that can get complicated but uh, some tasks have like very defined workflows that are well suited for self service. All their tasks are, are are suited for like a hybrid. You want to do yeah. part with an a part with a bot, part with an agent. And other tasks, frankly, you you kind of do want to route to an agent directly, like something like file a claim, like or say like report an accident, right? Uh, if, if you if you say hey, I'm going to report an accident, you you want to be packed into a human. You want to show some, yeah. Like you're, you 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 want to get like advice and like it's it's a tricky situation, right? If you're if you're involved in a car crash, so yeah, you don't want to be somebody's all emotional. Yeah, they they've just gotten in an accident. You you don't want them talking to a, a bot. Yeah, so that's that's kind of what the the combo of autopilot and flex does, where uh, autopilot can do the task recognition, detect that you are filing a claim. Right. If you look at the samples here, uh, we have some that are report an accident. I got into a car crash. 
right? I crashed my car, car crash, right? Yeah. These need these need escalation immediately. And with Flex, once we hand off to Flex, you can have like different queues with different priorities. So like the person that escalates on like the like the standard escalation gets one priority and the person that escal that's filing a, a claim gets a different priority yeah. when it hands off to the agent. So it's kind of like this interplay between automation and leveraging our, our human agents that we believe is so powerful. So here as an agent, you're going to complete uh, and say, okay, nope, this is completed. And then no active tasks. I'm here and say, okay, I'm done for the day. <laughs> I'm offline. You can see how, thanks for chatting with us. I can start another chat. So that's kind of like a lot of the, the new stuff that, that I was telling you I'm super, super excited about that I hadn't showed you before. And, and we believe it's going to be really, really powerful. Normally, these are like two separate worlds where like uh, you have to stitch them together or like yeah. you have to. Um, and, and when you deploy in production, when you deploy in the real world, the, the reality is that you need these two worlds to work in consonance. And... And we believe that that is, that is key to the success kind of autopilot's not, uh, we, we, we don't assume that we will build a, a, a platform that will pass the Turing test at the first go. Yeah. And yeah. we realize the reality that working together with the contact center agents is the best possible customer experience. So, you know, we put a lot of effort into that smooth handoff and you can do the same in, you can do the same in voice, which is also pretty cool. Yeah, I think that's the, the, the reality, you know, where, where this stuff is, is really effective. It's not, um, you know, humans working without bots or bots working without humans, but the combination of the two where the bots can yeah. do things that um, really free humans up to do human kinds of tasks, you know, and, and, and maybe that um, in the case of a car accident, just providing empathy that, you know, a bot is not going to be able to do, uh, or answering complex questions that it just doesn't make sense to try to get a bot to do. Um, yeah. and yeah, I love this, the, uh, you know, the seamless handoff. Yeah. I, I was, uh, uh, no, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you know, it, uh, is, you know, working on a, a, a few bigger projects using autopilot and, you know, one client we were working on uh, an Alexa skill, and um, you know, backed by by autopilot. And he uh, he called, and um, you know, I was talking to him. He said, "Well, you know, I'm um, you know out now. You know, I, I don't have access to an Echo, so I'll you know I'll try it when I get home." I said, "Hold on, you know." And I set up a telephone number, and within a couple of minutes, I, I said, "Hey, just call this number, and you can you can test it that way." And he was just blown away. He's like, "I thought we were building an Alexa skill." I said, well, we are, but the way that we're building yeah. it really allows users to access it from lots of different channels. And, yeah. uh, and, I, and I think as developers, um, we need to be thinking that way more. Like it, it isn't going to be, you know, uh, we're, we're building once for Alexa or for Google or for SMS or for, yeah. you know, you know, pick your, you know, pick your, your, your channel. Uh, users are going to pick the channel that they want to use. And beyond that, um, they're going to very likely change from channel to channel. You know, like you have somebody that today will, you know, ask a question uh, because they're at home through an echo and, you know, then they'll be in their car and they'll ask something. Well, hopefully they aren't texting while they're driving. They'll, you know, they'll be out of the house and they'll, they'll, they'll yeah. want to access uh, via text message or, or via telephone. And the assistance should be accessible anywhere and through any any means that the user chooses. Yeah, and one of the things we, we think a lot about is it's kind of the the importance of separating the the intelligence layer from the channel. Because when you build a, your your models and all your intelligent intelligence layer on a channel specific uh, tool. You, you can't leverage that across. And the models become more robust when they see more types of examples. So one of the things um, you'll notice here is that 
we have like all the different all the different ways that you say stuff and here it's like you notice a typo hi hi there still got that that it was a greeting uh, but here you see uh, for example the one that came through voice right and then one core one cool thing is that you have with this you have a supervised learning loop where you can take these queries and and create a sample from them so can i talk to an agent like that is talk to representative and you you add it and next time you build the model and it is it even uh, kind of keeps track of which ones you've reviewed and which ones you're pending review so like you can say okay this one discarded this one discarded uh, only show me the ones that are pending review and then it helps you kind of keep track of that supervised learning loop so that you can keep all this stuff if you train it with samples that come from messaging that come from voice that come from alexa it'll build a much more a robust model and then you'll be able to to use it across than kind of building in different models for for each of the platforms is if if kind of fragmenting code is is bad fragmenting the models is it's kind of uh, 10 times bad yeah 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 or building um yeah. you know, seven different versions of a bot so that yeah. you can uh support different channels i know uh you know, having that information, what channel it's coming in, um, on the back end code responding is important too, because the way that you would respond or the, the messaging that you would use, say, if you were responding to somebody that is coming in through web chat might be very different than how you would respond. Yeah. It's auto, you know, audible or audio an audio response. Yeah. And that's the key of, of being able to, to have these kind of dynamic actions where uh, here, you, we pass always you have like event dot current task but if you do like event dot channel we pass the channel and then you can customize the message for for each channel if you want so that you have kind of a unique experience yeah and a couple of cool things that we announced recently or a really cool thing is the whatsapp um, integration so we have facebook messenger we have slack but like WhatsApp, you're you're able to uh, build a WhatsApp bot with like the same characteristics, like being able to hand off to an agent, doing all the same thing. But instead of being here, it's on a WhatsApp. Um, it's on a WhatsApp number. Or, yeah, no WhatsApp. So it's uh, it's pretty cool, and yeah. like you kind of. You got it working for web chat. You got it working for SMS. You got it working for Alexa or Google Assistant. You type in uh, WhatsApp. You kind of get that for absolutely free. And then yeah. there's there's really interesting stuff coming. Uh, all the stuff that's happening with RCS and like the Android ecosystem on messaging. That's really interesting. Kind of where Apple Business Chat is going is is really interesting as well. And on the API, they're, you know, using like just a generic channel. I mean, you really aren't even limited to those channels there. Um, those, uh, you know, the, those are the, the most popular and most obvious, but you could really, um, through the API, plug into any channel. Yeah, you could build, you could build any, you could build your, integrate your own channel. If you have, for example, your, your custom build web chat, you can absolutely uh, we have we have an endpoint for custom channel and you can absolutely hit that for for your own web chat or if you want to integrate with a channel that we don't support so you're not like you're not trapped into like waiting for the roadmap or anything you can you can build it uh, yourself yeah, no, we've we've been um, uh, we've been super excited about it, and you know, having uh, a lot of a lot of fun working on the projects that we're working on with uh, with you guys and with clients of ours that are uh, that are now um, backed by autopilot, and uh, uh, it's come a, come a long way in a short period of time. It's come a long, long way. <laughs> uh, I know that didn't happen by magic. I know you guys are doing a lot of work, but. Uh, I think maybe the uh, I, uh, the first time I saw it was uh, up in New York in like June of last year, and yeah. it doesn't. I mean, it yeah, I, it's uh, it's a completely different product, you know, yeah. in, in yeah, yeah. less than a year, huh? Yeah, but it's it's also 
cool to to talk a little bit about those hackathons and how how we build this product uh, and and we really build this product with with the developer community we did um and normally how you you build a product like you kind of research the stuff you, you build 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 and then you do a some sort of beta where you where you invite customers we took a different approach with autopilot and um, we did a series of hackathons uh, throughout the world we did four hackathons and like the first version of the hackathon was like something that uh, looking back it was like irresponsible to put in front of customers <laughs> it was like it was barely working <laughs> you saw the second version then from new york we went to london then we came back to new york and oh and i saw the second yeah, i saw the second version is that what you, that yeah. was that the version yeah 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 and and that's a really cool cool way to build a product build it with a community uh build it with 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 folks that have great ideas on 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 what they want to build and and they just come to the hackathons and and you go at it and and you see what's working and, and what's not and and you are able to to iterate really quickly. The the other thing is that we we take the full team to the hackathon. All the engineers, the data scientists, the the ML engineers, we take them to the hackathon, uh, and they're they're working with customers and everybody's is helping customers. So we we are a very customer focused company, and like those hackathons were kind of a really cool way to to build this product. Yeah, I, I, I really, um, I really enjoyed it. And, you know, I, I got to say, like, when I went, I, I kind of expected um, to see a lot of the same, you know, because there's, uh, there's Dialogflow, of course, and um, Amazon Lex and, and Google, uh, or in uh, Alexa, of course, and, and some other ones out mm -hmm. there. So um, I, I kind of expected that, um, but was really pleasantly surprised and, and mostly in, um, you know, understanding early on the, the vision for building bots that could work with humans. I think that is just makes a ton of sense, especially in business use cases. Yeah. And um, in, in, in one platform to build bots that will work across, you know, whatever channel the user selects, I, I think that is, uh, you know, uh, we can't tell people to use one channel. They're going to pick whatever channel yeah. they want to use. And, and yeah. so, um, you know, and, and we don't know what's coming, yeah. right? Uh, we don't know if uh, what's coming or if it's going to be a new messaging ecosystem that's going to take over, or maybe it's going to take over in a part of the world for a part, like for a given demographic. Like we don't know, and kind of betting on a on an approach that is future proof is 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 really important. Yeah, no, I, I, I went to a, um, a, an event not too long ago that was um, uh, actually a, like a, a VR, you know, virtual reality. And, and yeah. you know, they've got digital assistants that they're working on the company that I was meeting with and, uh, you know, doing a lot of, of cool things. And, you know, and all of a sudden you start seeing where um, these brand new messaging channels are, are going to come up for, for gameplay or for, you know, VR worlds and things like that and being able to, to tie into, again, whatever channel the user is, wherever they are is where you, you've got to be. Yeah. 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 Well, this was, uh, this was really great. I, um, uh, I really appreciate you taking the time out. I know oh. you just have a, a ton of plates in the air and, uh, finding, finding, uh, extra time is not easy. So I appreciate that. And um, if, if somebody wants, uh, has questions, uh, wh where should they go? What, what, should they, uh, what should they do to, you know, to uh, contact you or contact the team? Yeah, so check out uh, twilio.com slash autopilot or twilio.com slash docs slash autopilot. Uh, there you'll find like, all, the, all the documentation. So you'll find all the documentation on how to get it started. You'll find a, a couple of tutorials that are, that are, that are really kind of key to follow. So here on docs slash autopilot, you'll get a bunch of videos and content on how to get started. If you need uh, to reach out to us, um, just shoot us an email to, to help at Twilio. Uh, the product is in beta and we are watching all the tickets very closely and we're happy to to uh, to chat with you guys and and help you get started and hear hear what you what you're 
what you're looking to build. Awesome. Well, hey, again, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll say uh, thank you and I'll let you get back to it. And uh, maybe uh, we can regroup in a, in a few months and, and see what's new. If it's uh, absolutely, absolutely. And that it might be a, you know, a whole, uh -huh. new, uh, whole new world. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And thank you. Thank you, Steve. And uh, thank you for the invite. All right. We'll see you. Okay. Bye. Bye bye.